And John B. Gordon said that the concentration was not finished. The, the battle was not finished. But Early was concerned about his men. We, we, you know, you can't really argue with that. And he said, and, but Gordon was, he was upset, John B. Gordon. And Gordon says, we halted, we hesitated, and we dallied. Hey guys, so uh, we just checked out of the wayside, <clears throat> excuse me, we just checked out of the wayside in and which is this way down Route 11, which back in the day was known as the Valley Pike. And on October the 19th, 1864, you're looking right here at the battlefield or part of the battlefield of Cedar Creek and it ran along even as far as these tree line out there and then three miles down that road three miles down Valley Pike uh, was one of the starts of the battles where the Confederates were down here and that's where we're gonna drive to next and then it went the line of the Union troops was three miles that way and then probably another mile this way so it was a long line of troops and in this field right here there were 32,000 Union troops and their movements were you know followed by the Confederate spies that were up in the mountains like up in the mountains over there and uh, over there so Massanutten Mountain and Fisher's Mountain so they were the Confederates were watching the movement of the uh, uh, Union troops and then right down here I don't know if you can see on this camera I'm gonna get my other camera and show you but the Bell Grove uh, plantation was right down there and that was General Sheridan's headquarters so anyway we're gonna get down here we're going three miles to Hupp's Hill so uh, Tina you could help me out if I forget some details but right here and on up the road just a little bit where I was talking just a minute ago there was a lot of there was 32,000 Union soldiers that were camped out or what they say back in the day bivouacked here and uh but early in the morning we're talking real early daybreak jubal early and his troops he only had fourteen thousand men they decided at the urging of general lee to go ahead and attack and during this attack uh there was a colonel wright that was in charge because General Sheridan had gone to Washington, D.C. to get more information from, from Washington, D.C. and Abraham Lincoln and what to do. So uh, 
of course they had prior to that uh sharon had instructed uh general custer to go around and start burning buildings and houses all through the shenandoah valley and he started doing that burned about 17 buildings then they told him to stop but after this battle all that would be resumed and because they wanted to control this valley pike that we're standing on you can see the cars going by right now so uh when juba early attacked right here it drove the union all the way back several miles past those line of trees that you could see in the distance so with only 14,000 men Juba early was having the day uh but things will change and i'll be back with you at the next location in just a minute I'll tell you what's going on So we're here at Hupp's Hill, which was basically the start of the Cedar Creek battle back in October 19th, 1864. And prior to October 19th, about six days before, there was a skirmish here between Confederate and Union troops. Uh, and the, basically the, basically Calvary's. Uh, and so the confederate troops started massing here and of course back up that way towards the north uh sheridan's army was massing his 32,000 troops jubal early was here with 14,000 troops right here on hupp's hill and what he was trying to do was to get the union to see him massing his troops and he was hoping to invict a uh, charge from the union troops because he had the high ground look at this ground here you can see the battle works that they had started i hope you can see this little indention of a hill i'm gonna go stand down in it And you can see like it's not level so you can see that they could prop their guns right on this ridge hoping and they would do that hoping that the union would come up because this was pretty good high ground but and then there's another one right down through here i'm gonna walk down this little trail right here and you can see another uh entrenchment surrounded by all these trees and this is absolutely beautiful property look at this so you can see the slope of the ground i stand right here you can see the the hill so obviously general sheridan who was in many many battles knew that attacking up this long slope behind me this long slope back here if he tacked up here the confederates are going to be entrenched they've been building this stuff for who knows how long sheridan would not attack he just kept massing up men so finally Lee ordered Juba Early to attack because they didn't figure the, the Union troops were gonna budge. And that's what started. So from here, they started advancing to where the last spot I was at in that field, that's where they first started the battle.
Beautiful ground. So at this point, uh, I think they call this Bowman's Hill. In the early mornings, they left from Hupp's Hill and the Confederate soldiers marched up this way and attacked an artillery that was right here behind me and Tina. And Thoberg, General Thoberg was here with his artillery forces and then out of nowhere came uh, General Payne's cavalry. And they attacked the artillery and then an hour later, General Kershaw and his infantrymen, they clashed with the remaining Union soldiers here on this hill, but they had to retreat back towards uh, the field where Sheridan's army and the 32,000 soldiers were bivouacked. Incidentally, the, uh, the fog through these bushes on that field where we were standing uh, the fog was so dense the morning of the attack that's what disguised the Confederate troops advancing forward they didn't even the the Union soldiers the artillery did not even see the Confederate soldiers movements because the fog the fog was so thick so then when somebody finally spotted them they tried to rouse up the artillery group to get going but by that time, it's already too late and the attack had begun. Hey guys, so at the, uh, the start of the war, going from right here where this monument is, if uh, you go back this way, about an hour earlier where we stood at Thor uh, Tho Thoburn's artillery they got pushed back overrun by the Confederates and an hour later about an hour later it's about a mile and a half that way um, the Union Corps of about 300 men Right here, this New York Regiment 128 with the dog bark barking, barking in the background. Hey, buddy. So, so anyway, they had about 300 men. By the end of the battle, they lost almost half of those men and they had to move further back along this way. Protecting their retreat uh, was General Custer who started protecting men just a little bit down the road at Stickley's Hill. And so Custer's Cavalry, as the Union forces were in retreat, he was aiding their retreat, giving fire back to the Confederates to, ha to halt their charge. But this took a while. They had to keep slowly moving ground to where, where we first started the video back in that field. There were 32,000 Union soldiers. But they even got pushed back even further because used 14,000 men kept coming. So our buddy back here. Yeah, that's their new guard. Oh, he just disappeared. He's, he's right he's there. Back. He's doing a good job. Yeah. He is. So, but anyway, can you imagine a small New York regiment losing half of its men in about an hour? That's pretty crazy. Okay, so now we're heading on this, this trail. It's called the Morning... Uh, attack. A, go ahead. The Morning Attack Trails. Thank you. So the Morning Attack Trails. And so the uh, there's a Vermont monument down here, and that's uh, actually Rutherford B. Hayes was part of this core from Vermont. And if you remember, Rutherford B. Hayes ended up being uh, president of the United States. But <clears throat> along this trail, uh, we're not going to do the whole thing because it's like a, a mile, a little over a mile and a half, and we don't have the time for that today. But we're going to walk down here and look at the Vermont Memorial. Uh, but the key thing about this is, like I was saying, the artillery was attacked at Thoburn's. 
uh, the Confederates came through the fog. They they let the advance from Hupp's Hill come down this way, moving north, crossed Cedar Creek, and the whole time that they're doing this, uh, the infantry, the Union infantry, trying to slow the advance of the Confederates uh, to give times for their troops to organize. What you don't know here is that it was many will say it was complete chaos for hours fighting from all over the place Thoburn's here just you know just about what mile from here yeah. if that right here the New York regiment was overrun lost half of their men uh, they kept trying to retreat and so they're all along Cedar Creek uh, there were Union forces, so but they were being overrun early in the morning, and uh, but the tide will turn later in the day, and we'll get to that in a little while. here but just think there was a lot of violent activity going on in these woods back during the Civil War and uh, right up here is the Vermont Memorial so we're gonna check it out If uh, didn't have a chance to read all of that, basically the most important thing is that shortly after battle, not too long, a couple hours into the battle, the Vermont Brigade lost over 110 men in a short period of time. So pretty sad. Rutherford Beat Hayes was part of that Vermont Corps. And that's, many of them escaped up to with Sheridan's uh, brigade so right here in this beautiful land
So guys, I'm standing right here. This is almost finishing up the early morning fighting here at Cedar Creek. If you can imagine, out in this field, Union soldiers were retreating because they were being overrun by Confederate soldiers. And the fighting went all the way back into these woods right here. And over the ravine, there were, you know, Colonel Cook had ordered uh, his soldiers to cross that ravine and go engage in the fight, but they were not doing very well. If you can see, there's a radio tower right up through there. And that's where we were at, where Thoburn's artillery was overrun and Kershaw was advancing here. Other Confederate troops were advancing here, pushing them, pushing the soldiers across the ravine. Now, if you move over onto this side, you can see that's the pike. I was facing I-81, but now this is Route 11 and the Valley Pike. And I can see over here just to the side, right through there, you can see uh, Bell Grove. That was Sheridan's headquarters. Now, at Sheridan's headquarters, that's the most experienced fighting group that there was. And Sheridan is on his way back now from Washington, D.C. And he's got some experienced soldiers like General Custer in this cavalry, and he's got the cavalry of merit as well. And uh, so while the Confederates with only 14,000 troops were doing really, really good, they're gonna head right in to Sheridan's main corps. Okay, so we're we're heading back down towards the the pond and the ravine and uh, that's where General Cook gave his order saying General Cook it's not General Cook it's General Emery and he's the one that ordered uh, Colonel Thomas took him by the hand and said and I'm not quoting, but he said, Colonel Thomas, I've never felt worse about giving anyone an order in my life, but you gotta cross that ravine and engage the troops in battle up at this hill. He knew things were desperate. So here they were down here, crossing this ravine, going up that way where we were up there at the top of the hill and uh that was pretty much the end of this morning but it wasn't looking too good for the union at that point okay so uh tina and i are now going to go for the little tour of the bell grove plantation house
Mount Carmel Cemetery. And uh, we stopped briefly uh, the fighting at the Bell Grove Plantation was fierce, but uh, the Army, the Union Army, had to keep withdrawing from the field. And right here, General George Washington Getty stood ground for about an hour and a half on this post right amongst some of the old cemetery stones and the battle raged on for a while then general early had the artillery open fire on a huge barrage for about 30 minutes on this hill and so general getty's troops had to withdraw and they headed on back to further out of Middletown. So, which you'll see here in just a minute, early pushed forward. It was getting late. It was like four o'clock and he decided three or four o'clock that, that that was enough. He had pushed the Union forces a long way all the way down from you know we've gone a long way if you follow the map that uh, that i'll show you a picture of in here uh he continued to push them all the way back here but then he stopped he said his men were tired and so forth and so on and we can't question him now but uh all i can say is if it was stonewall jackson they would not have stopped but it wasn't because stonewall jackson got killed a couple years earlier at Chancellorsville. So, but nothing against Jew Worley. He's a great soldier, great general. He was trying to look out for his men, had to look out for tired horses. And so, cause they started at, I mean, from 4 a.m. to about three or four in the evening, they're wanting to halt. But I'll tell you what happens next. So, right here, at the end of the day, about 3 o'clock, between 3 and 4, Jubal Early stopped the troops. His line extended here, and as we go around this road, I'll have the camera out, and you can see how long the line went. But the Confederate troops made it right here to this point and points westward and uh there were a lot of upset generals like general john b gordon and john b gordon said that the concentration was not finished the the battle was not finished but Early was concerned about his men. We, we, you know, you can't really argue with that. And he said, and, but Gordon was, he was upset, John B. Gordon. And Gordon says, we halted, we hesitated, and we dallied. Some of the Confederate soldiers, when we're starting, they're trying to organize this line. They thought maybe they could hold this line for a while. Some of the Confederate soldiers went back through pillaging the union camps that they had just throttled through the hillside finding just about anything they could find of value uh so that became their interest not trying to finish this uh battle up so we're almost at the end of the battle of cedar creek and uh tell you what happens next
okay, the road we just drove on, uh, that was Jubal Early's line. Now we're heading to Sheridan's. And uh, Sheridan is getting back from Washington, D.C. We'll tell you about that in just a minute. All right, so I've been telling you today about Sheridan going to Washington, D.C. He did that in, on October the 18th. Came back, and he stayed at Winchester, which is about 15 miles to the north, I think, isn't it? Or is it 15 south? Wherever it was. But uh, Sheridan, the famous, what they call now, Sheridan's Ride. He got word that there, there were was the attack was underway. He rode hard, got here about 10:30. By that time, a lot of his troops are being pushed back all day, as we've talked about earlier. And then by about three or four, Sheridan, who spent all the rest of that morning making battle plans for a counterattack, he's been doing this all day figuring out how he's going to do this hang on so with uh general custer's cavalry on that side Merritt's cavalry on this side and sheridan's army along this road is probably down through here you can see down through there and up this way, they prepare now to attack. And of course, as we all know, Jubal Early's been or trying to bivouac probably about how far away is that road, Tina? Maybe half a mile to a mile back. So Jubal Early's about half a mile, maybe a mile. I don't know if, I don't think it's quite a mile as the crow flies because they're going to go as the crow flies right that way and uh, so with the aids of them they attack at 4 o'clock and uh, immediately Early's men who are tired they are spent the horses are tired and they're spent immediately Sheridan starts pushing them back pushing them back and I'll tell you the conclusion here in just a minute. So uh, I'm standing at the Valley Pike, the end of General Sheridan's line, which extended all the way up to that creek we were at just a minute ago. And after Sheridan pushed forward, he swept the Confederates. They had to sur surrender there were over 10,000 casualties combined. I'm gonna walk down here. But, uh, like I was saying, there was uh, 10,000 casualties in this one day battle. Over a thousand lives were lost. There were a thousand uh, Confederate soldiers that were captured mostly by General Custer and others and uh, so that pretty much you know this was October of 1864 of course the war ended in 1865 
uh, and so you can see things were getting pretty severe with these this loss of Cedar Creek and basically the Union taking over the Shenandoah Valley uh, which was the main thoroughfare through the war for the Confederates to get supplies and all that kind of stuff. So uh, this concludes the day for Cedar Break. I may bring something else up, but uh, first of all, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you like this kind of thing, let me know if you want more of them. I'm living in Virginia, so I can go to a lot of battlefields. I am planning to go to Appomattox where the war ended, Gettysburg and Antietam, and other things. So look forward to seeing you. Hope you can give this a like and subscribe, like it, subscribe to my channel so I can bring you some more stuff. Leave comments and I appreciate you watching. Have a great day. This is a really good artist's rendition of Sheridan's push forward the counterattack. And incidentally, Abraham Lincoln wrote to Sheridan and said, I'm just gonna read this quote that's on this sign. It says, with great pleasure I tender to you and your brave army the thanks of the nation and my own personal admiration and gratitude for this month's operation in the Shenandoah Valley and especially for the splendid work of October the 19th 1864. So Sheridan was able to reverse an almost certain Confederate victory which may have allowed the confederates to go on for many many more months had they swept the field with the union soldiers but that didn't happen and we all know what happened at the end of the war uh surrendered appomattox in april of 1865